what was mid 50s Bangla cinema was looking at was a certain kind of this range in a man, in a figure who was good looking, but also at the same time, there is a certain kind of ordinariness about him, which was extremely crucial to establish the stardom that post-1947 Bengali cinema probably was looking for. So I, my first thing was that this whole thing about uh, coming, seeing, conquer is a part of can be mythology, but it's not history. History never, ever operates like that. So the giants of cultural life usually do not come from the back. And we generally tend to look at that because we, we actually look for easy answers to complex questions. There is a left-wing uh, critical uh, school which very very easily thinks of this as pre shottajit and post you know, Everything you pre shottajit was bad and everything after shottajit came. That's absolutely wrong. I mean, see, performatively, if there would be no Chobi research, there would be no 1966, Uttam is in the peak, peak of his popularity. And here comes Shottajit and says, listen, this is a script. And anybody looking at the script will know that this is not just uh, any other actor's life. This is Uttamma's life. Shuchita actually never moves. She begins and ends more or less in the same plateau. I mean, she plateaus as a whatever she brings to the screen. I mean, many people will be very unhappy by saying this, but that's that's actually how it is. See, the actor Uttam Kumar, I mean, he will eat you up in the screen. So it is not that he wants to, but he will. I mean, that's precisely the part. That's precisely why Uttam Kumar is. I mean, if you look at a film called Jodi Jantar, if you look at the scene and you would not even get, realize for many minutes that Shomitra is there sitting in the room, Hello everyone, welcome to Film Copan. Today we have a very special discussion with this very special person celebrating the birthday of Mahanayak Uttam Kumar. Uttam Kumar holds an eminent place in the hearts of all Bengali cinephiles, including us. And our guest today has done the remarkable work of capturing the legend's journey in cinema in an English language book, the first of its kind, which enables cinephiles across the country and globe to know the iconic star better. Shyamdev Chaudhary, the writer of Uttam Kumar, A Life in Cinema, is a teacher in the School of Letters at the Ambedkar University, Delhi. He is a fellow at the International Institute of Asian Studies, Leiden, and also a Charles Wallace Fellow. He is also known for his other writings on politics, cinema, and more. Shyamda, welcome to Kankopat. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Shubhadi Paru. Thank you so much. I'm very, very happy to be here today, especially is... today being... Uh, Kumar's, uh, but, but I mean, so, yes, absolutely. Uh, the pleasure is all ours, Shayanda. And before uh, I start, I will like to address the elephant in the room. Like uh, the, the question is, it always comes up that why are three Bengalis going to discuss on Uttam Kumar in English language, but not in the Bengali language? So, guys, uh, uh, what what we feel is that an icon like Uttam Kumar from Bengal should be known very well across across India and even across the world. And not on, it is not only about Uttam Kumar, but there have been icons in other regions also. Uh, if that is, and that those discussions have also been in English in our channel, the only idea is that everybody across India and across the world gets to know about the person, about the eminence of that person, about the contribution of that person to the cinema. So bear with us, the discussion is going to be in English. Uh, saying that, Shanda, my first question to you is that, uh, of course, you have written about Uttam Kumar in such great detail, but tell us, does it not feel unbelievable to talk about him at times? About a star whose stardom goes unmatched in an industry even after 40 years of his death. The world has changed so much and even then for Bengalis, there is no one even close to Uttam Kumar. Is it the Bengali nostalgia that comes into being which can never come out of the shadow of the heroes like it happens for Tagore or maybe Ray, recent times Saurav Ganguly? What do you think? No, you are absolutely right, uh, Shubhati. I mean, the, uh, you know, one of the reasons that I, I, was, I uh, went ahead with the book is precisely to tap into this sense of amazement. Because uh, I, when I first thought of the book, long back actually, first thought in the sense I had some idea, vague idea, just as, as late as, I mean, as early as 2005. But I kind of, and I kind of had this in idea, but it never fructified, various reasons and all of that. But when I finally came back to writing in 2017, I began in all earnest, 17, middle of 17, I realized that 12 years have passed. And since I thought, and, and you know, almost 40 years since Uttam Kumar died, 
and there has been absolutely no change in the in the in the heft and the kind of uh, you know uh, an iconic uh, kind of talismanic stature that you can come kind of you know, has so my so my so it's like this and i began thinking about the book precisely because of this to inquire into why right is uh such a thing uh, happening why is it even possible uh, you know and when i came back finally to writing this thing only had increased my my sense of this thing that uh, you know if i if i knew that in that decade because you know this was also the decade of enormous changes social media smartphones internet and yet some things kind of forward exactly where it was you know in some sense so am i so in the sense that i was that when i came back to writing i exactly thought that what is it that makes this such a such a such a phenomenon after life i mean it was the after life of uttam kumar where i began actually the inquiry in fact the first title of the book was supposed to be called something like the heroic laughter of modernity the life cinema and after life of uttam kumar so after life was one third of the original plan but of course later uh, thankfully kind of became more simple but so you are absolutely right and now that is number one that uh, you know this this whole thing about uh, uttam kumar's uh, uh, longevity after life longevity posthumous longevity is something that is really remarkable i mean i not only me i think in our celebrations or in our understanding we often do not understand that in a in a in an industry which is so fickle which is so famous for throwing people out the moment they are out of uh, you know reckoning the moment your popularity is gone i mean how many examples can you give of people who have it was very much alive and very much on the comparative young side of their life and it has been completely wiped out from public memory after having some some cinematic achievement in early their life i mean they they debuted in 25 and by 35 they forgot it gone nobody even talks about it. i mean there are you know you can count them in hundreds virtually but here is so cinema by nature is always that and it moves on it has an industrial life which which moves on i mean you know uh it produces new icons it produces more stars it produces more cultural kind of needs and it moves on here is something which hasn't happened so and you know what i i i have spoken about it elsewhere that this is also i mean i will i will i will not go into all the this thing the very first question because you know this is a very important question what you asked but at least to put it in this way that um i you know nostalgia is perhaps one part that there is some kind of longing that continues to be a bit to continue up on a bit the longing for a figure you know but the question is why this longing cannot be just given to something as simple as nostalgia nostalgia is also not simple but there should be something much more complex than just nostalgia and you know and what is more amazing is that uttam kumar what i you know last week i spoke about this in a talk uh, as is that that much of uttam kumar's uh, 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 in a stardom was completely divorced from uh, mass politics or studio systems right so if you look at the south there could be some kind of a uh, reproduction of that stardom through other means like politics or or mythological you know uh, reenactments like it happened with india in in in, in telugu or politics like ngr in in tamil nadu uh, or in terms of something like a very studio enabled uh, uh, stardom like dilip kumar here is we are talking of a stardom which is which does not have a political angle does not have a mythological angle and does not have a studio so which means that the stardom was built completely on on the idea of stardom alone on the singularity of a stardom alone. so it is even more surprising that it continues like that so many years after that shanda one of the biggest takeaway for myself and i think i also talk about shubhadeep from your book is the vivid details in which you talk about the origin of uttam kumar like you know so many myths that we have in the industry one of the myth is like he came he saw he conquered which is absolutely wrong as we understand from the book he is one who was ridiculed by the co-stars 
or there were cartoons drawn for him for the fail, failed attempts like you talk about in detail so we just wanted to talk about that part because that's something i guess a lot many in our audience would be not aware about and they are only aware about you know the superstar the icon but not how he came up to it and just before right. you answer i just want to show this book to all of our audience such a brilliant read in so many ways shyamda has captured the this icon called uttam kumar i mean this is a must read for anyone who loves bengali language films or for that matter indian cinema this is this is an absolute must yes shyamda please thank you thank you so much thank you so much um uh well you know uh you know the one of the first things i uh, thought about when i was writing because see i see i've been an academic my always i'm very skeptical about everything there that's my first job you know uh, there's a famous marx marx aphorism doubt everything if you don't doubt you don't question so i my first thing was that this whole thing about uh coming seeing kong is a part of can be mythology but it's not history history never ever operates like that there is no example there could be one example of prodigy like, like you know uh, mozart could be considered in that sense a uh, child prodigy playing at the at the vienna sport when he was 10 years old or something or you know but most people most cultural uh, uh, icons or cultural the 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 giants of cultural life usually do not come from the vacuum hmm? and we generally tend to look at that because we we actually look for easy answers to complex questions and mythology is one way to answer make simple answers to complex questions so what happened for uttam kumar no no the god came so and conquered you know same same problem is with understanding strategy trees i mean patel pachali was absolutely remarkable but there was a lot of things being prepared from the 40s for patel pachali to come it was not it just come from i mean of course I mean, this is no in no way to doubt the genius of ray but cinema especially cinema as composite collective extremely industrial art form does not lend itself to such individual genius individual genius could be poetry maybe at best you know but cinema definitely does not lend itself to such kind of individual genius i mean just think of pothet pachali and think of just ray alone trying to do everything i mean from vibhuti bhushan to shubhratu mitra you need the whole thing i mean sir also kanu bandopadhyay and shor i mean shor bajaya is role so it's all there they have to all come together right right, right. like when shottojit must be working in his ad agency there was also shubhratu mitra and bangshi chandragupta deriving those kind of things which could have come into prathir pachan of course of course of course and throughout the 40s also the film society movement and one said but also you know if you look at the the work of late studios from udar pathe to babla to films like you uh, know kirani jibon etc which came just before pathe pachan you see that there are us there is this there is this uh, desire if not the actualization in bangla cinema for a new kind of realism which finally found fruition in pathe pachan so it is we need to always look at the history very carefully and you know i have written a book as you know that there is a left wing uh, critical uh, school which very uh, very easily thinks of this as opri shottojit and post shottojit you know, everything we opri shottojit was bad and everything after shottojit came that's absolutely wrong i mean bengali cinema had an enormous leak interesting uh, uh, cultural life uh, sort of in the industrial studio life before the 50s now uh, so to come back to uttam i think the same operates for it i mean in the sense i mean see performatively if there would be no chobi bishash there would be no to you see chobi bishash in his later years 45 onwards and especially in the early 50s chobi bishash is always already clearing the decks for that kind of idiomatic naturalism that uttam would bring would make his 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 uh, uh, you know forte uh, uh so, so so that is one part the second part is of course the fact that there was a lot of uh, you know a certain kind of historical uh, sort of complexity that is involved here i mean i have written it in very deep detail in the book but here i will just mention one i mean you know 
what I feel, and this is very crucial to Uttam Kumar's rise, is that see, Uttam Kumar came from a kind of background which none of the previous heroes came from. Came from. All from Pramukesh to Durgadas to Chobi Bishas to everybody was in the what I've called in the book as quoting Hamlet, as man are born, man are born. I mean, they were usually from aristocratic families or very heavily educationally uh, sort of you know en endowed middle class families. Uttam was probably the first one to have come with none of its endowments. I mean, if you parallel look at Shomitra, Shomitra already had the blessings of Shishi Badri and Shoktaji, that he was already in Scottish Church, he was you know, with All India Radio. So a lot of training. Huh. I think what is what was Uttam's weakness is that he is he was a man without so-called pedigree and uh, very sketchy college education and mostly you know, into all kinds of theater, local theater, et cetera, et cetera. That actually, in some sense, at least that is how I read it, became his, 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 uh, his USP, so to say. Because I think in Uttam's ordinariness, there is that thing that, you know, I mean, what was mid-50s Bangla cinema was looking at was a certain kind of this range in a man, in a figure, in a, in a, in a screen actor, who was good looking, who was definitely uh, 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 attractive, but also at the same time, there is a certain kind of ordinariness about him, which was extremely crucial to establish the stardom that post-1947 Bengali cinema probably was looking for. Because if you look at the 50s films, early films of the film, it is, there is, there is a lot of He's actually appearing in a very wide range of films. And there are some films which are extremely fancy, you know, Pongkabutir Ghat kind of movies. Whereas parallelly, he's appearing in a new kind of realistic films like Uthohan, for example. And there you will see that Uttam Kumar is, is, can actually embody both this range. The dying range, which was most likely more theatrical. And the new kind of realistic acting, which was coming up, Tapan Sina and others. Now, of course, thanks to Uttam Kumar's own talent, the second one prevailed, right, after the mid-50s. And increasingly, Uttam becomes kind of in the embodiment of the new uh, uh, acting, acting style, the, the naturalism. No trace of theater, no trace of theatricality, extremely natural form of, of performance. So I think... This is very important that Uttam's rise also was one, the post-independence years, two, the decline of studio system, the three of the rise of, a, of an ordinary man who could also in some sense rise above the ordinary. But his rising above the ordinary is not necessarily coming from his either birth or pedigree, but is essentially situational in that sense. So I think in that in that kind of figure, which was constantly repeated in the 50s, I think that the huge popular appeal and the popular endorsement of Uttam Kumar certainly came from this, that look at this man. I mean, if he can, so can we, you know, in that sense, because... There was a desperation in the post-partition years, a desperation for a certain kind of screen hero who would not come from the other world of privilege and, you know, aristocracy, but from this world, which has been completely turned upside down by partition. So that historical conditionality is very important for Uttam Kumar's rise to understand. I mean, uh, I mean, because if you look at the, I mean, the final point is because there is nothing prodigal in Uttam Kumar in the beginning. He constantly trained himself. So one can't say that, oh, the industry saw him and said, oh, wow, look at this. And as you would see in the book I've written again and again, that he was like everybody. He was rejected, taken, rejected. And that happens. That is a norm for film industries. Mm. The fact that Uttam could turn this into his, to his advantage, and very quickly, when he got some foothold, he could quickly turn his weaknesses into his actually his strengths. That is perhaps where his talent became very important. That, that's so remarkable because, you know, we generally, when we see things are not working, we go back to things which are right. tested and tried. Whereas right. wherever he got a, you know, some kind of a platform, he was trying to move on. 
Yes, because, that's know, true. Once, once I read your book, and I understand that better now, uh, when I see, say, suppose a phone call in Share Chuatto that Uttam does, or even Ogni Porikha, which you mark as, you know, that that film which mm-hmm. is post Ogni Porikha and pre Ogni Porikha for the star Correct. in certain sense. It has a certain amount of theatricality, which is slowly going down with Shavaru Pore, then comes, you know, the golden period Correct. and all of that. Correct. 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 Absolutely. In fact, if you see that Uttam also, while he is at it, he's consistently unlearning and learning at the same time. So if you just in one single, say, sweep, if you watch, uh, if you watch Ogni Porikha, in fact, Shara Chuattu, also, because Shachuattar is, after all, his first big hit, and etc. Bushu Pori for Shachuattar. Shachuattar is still early, 54. But if you just look at 55 or 56, mm. where he's in Ogni Pori Kha, Shabar Opore, Shapmochan, parallelly in uh, Upohar, and a film that cannot be seen, for example, uh, Chirokuma Shabha, and Ikki Rant, which is, I think, a mm. fabulous romantic comedy by me. You will see that Uttam Kumar is already shedding the theatrical for the realistic. In one single year, this thing is happening. But by the time 58 comes in, 57, 58, he is already moved much ahead. And you will see this, and I have no qualms in stating, you will see this in comparison to Shuchitra. Shuchitra actually never moves. She begins and ends more or less in the same plateau. I mean, she plateaus as a whatever she brings to the screen. I mean, many people will be very unhappy right, saying this. But that's that's actually how it is. But Uttam is consistently moving. I mean, think of 56's Upohar, which is, I think, Uttam Kumar's best film of that time, to 59's Bichara. And Uttam has already built and broken mm-hmm. the matinee idol idea. So that is quite remarkable to do in a span of three years, when he could have easily not done any of them. He could have not done Morutitto Hinglaj, 59. He could have not done Bichara. He could have not done uh, Khokababu Prattabhattu. But he was by, in fact, the moment he became that star, 57 is his peak, you know, Haramashu. Um, then 50, Chawa, Pawa, etc. I mean, there are many films in 57, but Haramashu is some kind of a pinnacle. He could have easily continued in that moment. And many people in the industry wanted him to. But I think that is where more than his struggle or his tenacity. That is where I think I give Uttam Kumar a lot of brownie points. That he immediately realized that this image will have a very short shelf life. Unless he expands his over as an actor, he will not be able. So when it comes to 60s, he consistently plays with his image virtue. I mean, he can easily fit into a Dayanaya as much as he can become, say, the Nayo or Chorungi or, you know, slightly villainish like. Sheshanko, you see, Jotu Griho. So if you look at the 60s, Uttam is virtually doing whatever he wants to do because now he has explored the whole range and he's simply letting things come his way and enjoying it. So that is something where Uttam did, but actually, uh, uh, what should I say, uh, deserves a lot of Brahmin. This is actually so so educational, Shayanda, talking to you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, really, we get to we get to learn specifically the way you talked about how uh, how the art form of cinema is not never individually driven now and the struggles of Uttam Kumar. Uh, I'll come to the next question, um, uh, which is that you have mentioned uh, more than once that how the celebrated Chuchitra Uttam pair didn't get the best out of the actors, apart from maybe a handful of exceptions. Why do you think that might have happened? And uh, do you think stars tend to be guarded while sharing screen with an equally popular co-actor? And if so, like, does that apply to Uttam Kumar or Uttam Chuchitra? Uh, okay, good, good question. See, I, I, um, see, uh, the problem with Uttam Chuchitra not being, I mean, I would say their body of work is it has three parts. One is the pre-stardom. There are many films actually. Rio Probesh and you know, those kinds. Slightly pre-stardom films. Then there is the peak stardom. Ogni Porikha to Chao Power. Uh, so 55 to 54 to 58. Which is all. That is it. You know. And then there is a third part. 670s. Where the pair is trying to revive. You know? Nomurag. Harmanahar. Aloha Maralo. And stuff like that. Now, the third part is a washout, frankly, yeah. uh, because it does not, 
go anywhere near. I mean, if one can stretch the last film that is um, um, Grihodaho, which is 66, 67, which is also comes production, last production. Um, but uh, at best, you can see Grihodaho as their big thing. But I think for me, their, their uh, pairing is over by Shoptapu, 61. So there's only one film after that, which is Bipasha. But I would say 61 is where their their peak. And I'm thankful because I think Choktopudi as a as a romantic, uh, it's not a comedy, what should I say, as a, as a film of certain, of a romance, as a romance. Choktopudi cannot be uh, super secret. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so Choktopudi is too good a film in many ways. Uh, too, I mean, I'm glad that the couple... That the, that, the, that, the, that the first, second, the, the best part of their pairing um, ended in some ways with Shaktipati. Because anything after that would have been worse, which happened in the 70s when there was a desperate call to revive uh, their pair. So that's, so that is, uh, but so the question, the answer to that is that, you know, all industries unfortunately have the tendency of falling into formulas. And it is almost norm that if you are, uh, if you are, uh, once you have tasted a formula, you will desperately try to stick to it. So that is why I think in more cases, the films were comparatively mediocre and non, non experimental. I mean, of course, there's at least three, five films, Ektirat, Chahapawa, Karanashur, Shaktapadi, and um, Jibon Trishna, which I think is a very good melodrama, Oshit Shen's film. I think the rest are generally in the in the realm of the mediocre because, you know, uh, well, the, the refusal to go beyond. I mean, Potheolo Deli is unwatchable, frankly. So is so is Shagori, so is Shagori, Shagori 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 Shagori. Un, unwatchable. Huh? But I mean, and Sharechu Akhtar is not a Uttam Shuchitra film, for sure. Absolutely not. Sharechu is a Tulshi Lahiri and, and uh, Holuna Devi film, and it should remain so, and it's a different uh, genre, actually. So in that sense, uh, I'm saying that they are, they are, they are, their pairing is exploited or explored. In that sense. So that is the reason, primarily. Do we see, as I said, just, I mean, Shuchitra, in, Shuchitra is a great star. She is, has a luminosity, she has a, but she is really no match for him. Had it been, I mean, a Shabitri or previously Munjude would have been a far more, if, I mean, they could have pushed each other, like Shabitri would push it, push Uttam Kumar into better this thing. I mean, I personally feel Uttam Kumar remained unchallenged by Shuchit I mean, of course, they had very different uh, constituencies of appeal, so they were not even competitive. And the good part is they were also very good friends. So it was not that they were in a competitive system. They actually did actually make each other's screen life more comfortable. Than others. In spite of various stories that exist about Chuchitra's prima donna, these things, with them's problems, blah, blah. But I think they once it, once it stopped after Chaapa, I think Chuchitra gained because then she actually appeared in three of her best films, Dimjal Ejai, um, Shakpake Bagha, and... Uh, Hospital to an extent, but definitely, oh, uh, Uttar Fagun. So, which was again produced Uttar by Uttar Kumar. Produced, yeah. ah. So, I think Shuchitra to go away from the pairing actually helped Shuchitra to also find better roles because I think uh, you know, that way Bangla cinema also saw these female driven roles of some, some quality. And there she is. Shapati Bada Shuchitra is very good. She's very good. So, um, that is the primary reason. But uh, so that is, I think, should be what is uh, the problem of, of, of Star. And uh, I wish that, you know, there were, you, you may, I mean, I mentioned that uh, Shotujit had planned a Ghade Bhaire yeah. with Suchitra, Uttam and uh, Shomitra. Oh, what the, 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 most, the, 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 the best if film that Bangla could have produced. And uh, that didn't happen. It should have happened. In fact, if you think of Sh Shomitra Uttam, I mean, just imagine you're in, you're, you have two of these very good actors. And hardly after 61 Jinder Bundi, hardly anything for the next 20 years. I mean, how can you be so 
so stupid <laughs> in not thinking of a film that will bring them together. I mean, of course, they had planned the Tik Tiki, the cinematic version of Tik Tiki, but producers declined because there was no hero. Um, so that could have been another absolutely fantastic thing. Shomitra was supposed to direct Uttam and Shomitra were there. But apart from that, hardly any. I mean, of course, there is a Opurichito, there is a there is there is Jodi Jantem, uh, but Bakri compared to what could have been I mean, as a counterfoil to each other. So yeah, that is this is a myopia of any industry, and for, unfortunately, Bangla industry it is it has always been. So, <laughs> do you think there is also uh, uh, some uh, some amount of insecurity of other actors wanting to share the screen space with Uttam because of his such natural ability and maybe to take away all the limelight? Is is it possible that uh, not all superstars of that time were comfortable uh, uh, being with uh, Uttam Kumar? Do you think that's a possibility? <laughs> you know, uh, there are two ways to answer it. One is that if one would knew Uttam the man, the person. One shouldn't be uh, too uh, worried about this, uh, that, you know, Tom would uh, supersede uh, or Tom would um, consciously try to belittle a co-star of any, any, any range. doesn't have to be, I mean, Anil Chalaji says that early when Tom, he was just starting and Tom saw him coming out and, you know, he was part of the crew and uh, co-actors co and they were in the floor eating and Uttam comes out and says, why are you in the floor eating? Everybody. They said there is some chairs, something, something and Uttam says, no, no. I mean, there was a, I mean, as a person, Uttam Kumar was very really highly revered in the, not as so much as a actor star, but as a, you know, a person who means well, generally. So there is a very, I mean, at a, there is a very wide ranging testimonial to Uttam Kumar's generosity uh, mm -hmm. as a human being. I mean, lots and lots and lots. So, in that sense, I don't think anybody would be un, uh, unsure of should be, should have been. But, but saying that, see, the actor Uttam Kumar uh, is so, I mean, he will eat you up in the screen, you see. So it is not that he wants to, but he will. I mean, that's precisely the part. That's precisely why Uttam Kumar is. I mean, I'll give you one example. If you look at a film called Jodi Jante, it's a 73-74 mix, right? that kind of film. And Uttam Kumar has a short role. It's actually the main characters are Shupriya and Shomitra. It's based on a um, Naran Shanal Katar series. Yes, yes, Stanley Gardner's, uh, yeah, and uh, it was, which was being, being qualified by uh, Naran Channel. So here Uttam's character is in the end last scene, is Uttam dominates, where he actually finds the criminal. I mean, that scene, particular scene is now separately on YouTube, uh, actually. Now, if you look at the scene, and you would not even re realize for many minutes that Shomitra is there sitting in the room. I mean, there is Shomitra, there is, there is, uh, but you know the gravitas with which Uttam kind of you know after almost a, after several minutes there is Shomitra also in that scene you see uh, or if you look at the last scene of Apurichito where Shomitra becomes again unfit to be in the in the civil civil society and, it, and it becomes slightly mad thanks to the whatever happens to him. And Uttam is, is in jail and he wishes he could be like Shomitra and wash, you know, kind of remove his, 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 his memory. In one scene, and you will know how, where Uttam Kumar is, you know. So, so I won't be surprised if many people will say, sorry, I don't want to share screen space with Uttam because he's just too good. So it will both like, like that. I mean, so I, I've not read enough. I mean, I've not read anywhere where they say that, oh, this film came and I said, no, because of Tom Kumar is too good. Of course, they will not say that. So, so most more, it is like that the individual as an individual would probably not do it. But as an actor, he's, he, he's too good in that sense. I mean, you look at the last scene of Chiriya Khanna, for example, which yeah. is for me one of the fascinating scenes of uh, exposition in a detective yeah. novel. Yeah. And... Uh, Brilliant, brilliant. I mean, there are three, four scenes in Chiriya Khanna, which is a masterclass, pure masterclass. Nayak, of course, but 
Chidathana is a master class in three four sets. So yeah. I won't blame actors refusing to be <laughs> with Uttam Kumar on the screen. Yeah. I think it's delivery because on Chiriakana we had a we had a discussion with uh, Onirban Onirban who plays Bomkesh these days, and right. he was saying that you know what I get always uh, overblown with is the way he delivers those dialogues. Like in Chiriakana there is this dialogue Apna ke bolchi the way he says that Bengali ness and everything that he brings in. Mm -hmm. I remember even in Jodi Jantem while he was saying, uh, there was, I think someone of uh, in the group says, you know, onar ma man hani hoche, etc. And Uttam says, jar man hani hoche, taddika ek baat dekhe chen. Dekhoon, taddika ek baat dekhoon. Dekhoon, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, mane, uh, you know, actor, she, there is a, there is a Jera interrogation scene in um, Jibon Jigyasha, mm -hmm. Umar Raya and Uttam Kumar. And there, Uttam Kumar is the, 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 the advocate, he's the advocate general and he's a public prosecutor. And Kumar Rai, it's Kumar Rai, okay? It's not anybody. And here, he just says, there's a part where he says, uh, and he says, uh, he says, Okon. this is, you know, achha, okon. you know, this pause, how much to pause, how much not to pause, you know, some some of it, I mean, if you look at, for example, that scene in Chiriakana where um, he meets Roman Mundik first time, and there, you know, who stabbed? Shunayoni, Shunetri, Shunayoni. You know, there, there is this kind of repartee. I mean, it's fabulous. Shotuji is fabulous. <laughs> and also, or in Nayok, for example, he doesn't look entirely at Sh Sh Shonmila. He just looks up and says, Ewa Karjun no, Mama to Bhai. You know, the show is. <laughs> so, the, I mean, you know, that kind, and when he says, uh, she says something, I said, and he says, uh, you know, just think of it. He has to be both under his breath, but he has to be heard. So, yes. and he makes a uh, Sangati. You know, those kinds are pure gems of acting, cinematic acting. I mean, sorry, at, sorry yeah. at, at times it is comedy, at times it is, uh, you know, yeah. being pure comment. I remember, and I spoke about this in one of our videos. If you remember in Chawa Pawa, they are going mm -hmm. in this train and, mm -hmm. you know, Uttam and Shuchitra is conversing and they, there is this guy sitting mm -hmm. beside who says, Dada, ki bapar, and Uttam in a low voice, pore bolbo. I mean, <laughs> Absolutely. What a timing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, if you, for example, if you look at um, Chaddo uh, I mean, Chaddo is comparatively later in his life. I mean, such as, you know, every bit that he's making fun of them, he's enjoying <laughs> his, his, his decoy, but he's also very serious in his pranks. I mean, it's so good. I mean, or, you know, so I think even in small scenes, if you look at an early film, the Obak Prithvi, which is the first part is actually taken from an O. Henry story and uh, where he goes and eats in a restaurant because he wants to be thrown back to jail. <laughs> and he then says that I don't have money. I think that is also Shailen Mukherjee or somebody is the restaurant owner. I mean, it's, you know, it is a pure gem of I mean, pure class I and mean, Timing. And you see, these things cannot be learned in any yeah. acting schools. Where to where to put your paws, where to be under the breath, where to be above the breath, where to be loud. These are truly some things that you learn on the job and your in, in, intuitive intelligence. I mean, Ray has said this again and again about Naya, that whether the, the court is if there is some cogitation involved, I do not know. But whatever he brought to the uh, at performance, I mean, it, I didn't have to do anything. I mean, that famous scene where he and Shormila are on the next to the window, and there is this people who come on the station and recognize him, and mm -hmm. Uttam is holding his hand and saying, you know, uh, that. Uh, this thing which he has to tell his co-actor without making it apparent to that to those crowd that he is talking about them. This is not easy acting in cinema. You see, because imagine that this is no train, this is no station, this is all a set. 
This yeah. is all something where there are cameramen, this and that, and they to bring in that kind of uncanny naturalism. It's remarkable. I mean, I've mentioned this uh, story in uh, in the book where, uh, I mean, story in the sense they are all hearsay, could be true, could be not true, it doesn't matter. Where Bongshi um, Chandra Gupta Tom asks that you know, how do you make such uh, in now such remarkable sets? I mean, how do you explain this? So Bhumshandu says, if you can explain to me how you are so, so much of a natural, I will tell you how I make these sets. So you know that kind. So yes, I mean, it's it's a, it's a it's a it's a learning of of performance and also this the, the modernity. You know, the no no fat. Not a you know chip chipe in Bangla. That is the acting style, which is rare, which is very rare. And I think only a few stars or few actors can do this. That you know, even a very mediocre script, when Uttam steps in, it becomes watchable. Yes. But you take Uttam yes. out of it, there's hardly anything left in this film. So many it's of a them. Disaster. Right? Yes, yes, too many of them, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, you know, there are two hundred movies he star, one ninety six actually. Uh, more but 196 full films and you know 100 is something that that you can go back to in some way or the other early middle late but there are another 100 100 movies which are so bad and uh, but then uh, you know so but even within that 100 about 30 will be something where the whole film is there to exist other Maybe 50. The other 50 is only Uttam Kumar is there and you can watch it. I mean, Jodi Jantam is a very good example. Take out yes. PK Basu and there is nothing in the film. That's mm -hmm. pretty ordinary of film. But uh, so many of them. So many of them. Shanda, coming back to the question of this on screen chemistry, I think you have mentioned it and we also feel is this pairing of Orundhuti Devi and Uttam Kumar is very underrated and they have given so good films. I mean, Absolutely. I know Bicharok and Jotu Griho are one of your favorite Uttams, as for us. Even Monomoy Girls School and all, they, they are so good films and so less spoken about, right? Yes, yes. In fact, you know, that is something that I have throughout the book, uh, you may have seen it, that I have tried to extract Uttam out of this Uttam Shuchitra obsession. Yes, yes. And give him a life, uh, not only as an individual, but also with others, like, like you know, Uttam and Shavitri, Uttam and Urundhuti. Uttam and Anjanabhu, if you think of it, there's three films there. I mean, Thanateke Aschi, there is a bad film, Raj Grohi, but apart from that, Thanateke Aschi, uh, Chorongi, and Naika Shankar. Naika Shankar. And all three are so good. Anjanabhu is so good. And I mean, if you see Naika Shankar, this again, I mean, it's a fabulous romantic comedy. And wonderful repartee, wonderful chemistry between Uttam and uh, Anjanabhu. And so it is necessary that we also look not just Orundhuti, which is of course very obvious, and that Orundhuti is, you know, you can't think of a, I mean, a Picharok as a film, as an idea, is so ahead of its time, so ahead of its time. Imagine, a, you know, there is a dialogue with them says that, you know, I am, you, are, you are believe in God, but your God is an autocrat because he doesn't have to answer to anybody. I do not believe in God. I have to answer to the, to the, to the god of natural justice. This is 1959. If you still say this, you will be considered progressive. <laughs> more so, so the point the is, yeah, more so, more so with time. Yes, actually, now it's like more progressive than in the. So, uh, so that way is you think of a film like that where the the, the, the protagonist is dealt with a, you know, is involved with a very ethical dilemma whether to go ahead with his the more he goes back he realizes his his fallibility such a such a such a script such a film and Jyotu Grihu you know I mean if you look at Jyotu Grihu's brilliance is that it's a it's a it's a fall of art which I've also written fall of a it's decline of a marriage without any of the external agencies that usually cause such things you know so many years later Gulzar made in that uh, you know Izaza he yeah. doesn't still have to have a third woman. Second, third woman, yes. He couldn't think of this vacuum that can come out of nothing, which is there in, in which is again remarkable. And to 
Prabhupada Sina himself has said, so he calls it underacting or kind of. Uh, look at their, 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 uh, their acting on this. So Uttam Shuchit, Uttam Gorun Shuchit needs to be completed. There's a not hardly known film called Pushpo Dhanu. It's a, such a progressive film. She's a mother without a marriage. She befriends Uttam Kumar, Kumar understands. She's just a friend. And third only in the end, the son comes back. The father also comes back. I mean, remarkable for its time. And not an iota of sentimentality. Oh my God, how can you be mother without <laughs> those kinds of things? So, I mean, but, you know, or, or a film that I, I have mentioned again and again, Shuli Bari. And unsung film. You know, it's a skit by Tapan Sina and Pijush Bosch's first film because he was Tapan Sina's direct uh, assistant. Where Uttam actually goes to Orunduti and says, what the, f- what the hell are you doing as a Bidhoba, as a widow? Come with me and become my partner in making this town. And the, she actually comes. And at some point, Uttam Kumar says that, you know, I'm becoming a little this thing that my father would be unhappy with. And Orunduti says, if you go back to rituals, then I'm off. Because that is precisely, you know, no, this is unthinkable in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, we usually consider these things as very extraneous to Bengali sensibility. Mm-hmm. So in some sense, the whole idea of progressive politics and cinema is not really only in the domain of Satyajit and Ritik and others. Popular culture was also, and using Uttam, its biggest uh, calling card, also exploring uh, you know, very progressive ideas. It is different thing that the films were not the films that actually became, except Shaktapudi, which I think is very, uh, very much a film on that, on those lines. The films may or may not have been very big, but they actually were doing, exploring these kinds of things, which is quite fantastic. Few of, again, your favorite Uttam Kumar film are the films where he have deconstructed himself like anything. Right, in Jodhu Bangsho and Bagbondi Khala, uh, so early, I mean, th- that was so difficult, right? You know, you becoming the most popular man of an industry and becoming a murderer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, no, I mean, absolutely. You're absolutely right. In fact, if you look at um, Bichara onwards, to Bichara Bichara onwards, yeah. he's already exploring this slightly grayish domain, grayish area, which is, I think the film that makes it absolutely obvious is um, Kaltumiyali. Where actually there is a scene where he forces himself on Shukriya, which is unbelievable in Bangladesh. In fact, uh, Ashutosh Mukherjee had told him that this film, this is an un- unmakeable Bangla film. You cannot make it in Bengali. This is too sort of cosmopolitan or too, you know, not very, it's very complicated. It is corporate. Uh, uh, but the went ahead. It was largely Uttam's initiative to do the film. Uh, but the point is that you're right. So from, you know, Bicharok to Kaltum Alaya, Uttam has very often, if not very often, sometimes actually visited this thing that you need not be that Von Homer's uh, beneficial hero figure. You can also be grey. You can also yeah. be, it can range from insidious dealings, which happens in Kaltum Alaya, to murder, which happens in Sheshan to other things, you know. So I think that's a very remarkable thing. And so early in his life, he's doing it almost parallel to his, and that's right. something that I consistently have talked about in the book, that it is not successive, that Uttam becomes matinee idol, romantic mm-hmm. hero, then character. His, I think one of the major myths which need, needed to be broken is that Uttam is that rare actor who consistently plays two or three times at the same time. So in one, if in one, two years, there is a Chawa Pawa, you know, this kind of Shagorika, Otheholo Devi. Same frame, you see a Bichara, you see a Pokava, Pratava, you see a Moritito Hingalaj. Even a Moritito Hingalaj, an obsessive lover. Yeah. And he's not really likable. He's just an obsessive lover. He just refuses to take any reason why mm. Kunti, Shabitri's character, is not going to be with him. So I think that way, that's quite, quite remarkable. And I actually wanted to focus on that rather than 
you know, talking about some more well-known, uh, you know, that is one problem I think in our Uttam Kumar, what was at least, when I started to write and read up, I read up everything that is existing or many of Bangla cinemas, not all, several. And I think uh, one of the problems was precisely that, that there is a recurrence. If you, if you make one mistake, like Uttam Shuchitra, it con oh, Uttam Shuchitra is a decade long pair. No, it was a four year long pair, less than half a decade. Or Uttam Kumar was a matinee idol. No, I mean, you know, so once you say that, others just come and repeat that same error again and without looking deeply into the filmography. So, what have, you know, many people have said there is not enough of Uttam the person, which is true. Mm. I mean, I didn't necessarily go and I, Deliberately avoided much of personal how those relationships with Shaditri or Shukriya, or Shuchitra. I'm really not so possibly interested, frankly. Uh, I mean, but I have looked again and again at the filmography, and the filmography has revealed amazing things. That you know what was happening, and this is not something I started when I looked at it. I said, "Well, look at this," you know. So I think that is something I'm glad that people are now taking notice that it was not, I mean, readers like you who have carefully read the book are taking notice that there is so much to unlearn about somebody who we regularly remember every year in supplements. <laughs> but when beyond the gossips, what you have done is, you know, as you were saying, Uttam the person, you have brought in those facets of him like the generous producer or things which he is doing, which is detrimental to his career or the, you know, him as a producer. I mean, the generous, some instances that you have given are remarkable. I mean, those were things we have never been told. We have never spoken about things like them. Yeah. Also, you see, as I progressed with the book, I also realized that it's such a lonely thing to do. You see, I mean, there, perhaps during Uttam Kumar's time, there was no other more lonely figure than Uttam And it is, it is something that I wanted to, as you progress in the book, it becomes clearer and clearer that uh, these were important, you know, this kind of phenomenal popularity. I mean, that day, I was um, reading this new memoir by uh, Shodhujit Ray's assistant. Ramesh Shen, which a very dear friend of mine has edited, just come out from Signet. So I was reading this and there is a, there is a, because he has been with, he started his assistant directorship with Shatujit Nayak. And there is a scene where the Khanan station, Khanan station, Uttam Kumar is standing and holding. So there was no train, no short middle. It was separately shot. So he was saying when Uttam Kumar actually raises the cup, what do you see? Opposite the railway track, thousands of people and everybody is saying, Ami khabo, Ami khabo. I want it. I, so he says, Khabe. And thousands are saying, Ami khabo, Ami khabo. You know, I want it. I want it. This is, this is a phenomenal kind of popularity. This is one example. There are several in the book, right? Now, but yet, yet, how this kind of popularity, this kind of dependence of an industry pushes one to a certain kind of, you know, and, and with Uttam's generosity, which was, he was generous to a fault. And that actually also kind of contributed to his sharp decline after 75. That also had to be taken into account. That the, the decline that we saw in the 80s in Bangla cinema began with Uttam Kumar in the 70s. I mean, you, you know, a, a year saw I mean, if you count 74, Jodhu Bongsho, Bikele Borer Fool, Ami Shio Shaka, Nagur Darpone, Shunna Shiraja, Ognishad, Bagbundika. 74, 75. Then nothing. Next mm. five years, nothing. How can that be? I mean, either Uttanga completely sucked into kind of a different zone, which could be many things, which I've said in the book. Also, he probably became disinterested in his own fate. He just wanted to just do films to keep the you know the industry going, which is what happened. And uh, you know, Deep Dash, I mean, a film which is so bad at every level. And there are many much worse. I mean, Bondi and all are trash to the power of infinity. And a Desh Premi Bondi. I mean, Desh Premi, if you see it, it's, it's, a, it's a pity if you see it in Desh Premi. It's a pity. I mean, 
getting beaten up by gundas, Amitabh Bachchan coming and saving him. I mean, he didn't deserve that. You know? And so when I started writing in Delhi and I took spoke and different, it said, oh, yes, Uttam Kumar, he did a magnificent job in Amanush. I said, my God, Amanush is not even a film in the yeah. Uttam yeah. filmography. I mean, Amanush is a bad film. I mean, it's the worst acting of Uppal Dutt, by all means. And certainly one of the bad of Uttam <laughs> Kumar. I mean, <laughs> you know, so every... So at least Uppal, Uppal Dotto had Kolwal, Naram Dharam and others in Hindi. But Uttam, Uttam Kumar, to think Uttam Kumar as the actor who was there in Omanush, is like really pity. And that is something, one of the reasons which drove me to kind of give a sense of the, you know, entirety of the universe. Of Uttam Kumar's. Shanda, like uh, you touched upon uh, Uttam Kumar's uh, performance in probably one of the most, I will, I will say, most cherished performances and well-known performances with Satyajit Ray in Nayok. And Nayok uh, is a cinema which is probably close to every Bengali's heart and probably very well-known outside the Bengali circle as well. Uh, tell, talk a little bit about Uttam in Nayok, really. Just want to hear uh, talking. Sure. <laughs> yeah, oh, please. see. Uh, Thank you again for asking this. And I think um, Arup also asked this whole idea of the surgery. And I think I've talked about it again and again in the context of Nayo. That uh, you think of 1966, Uttam is in the peak, peak of his popularity. And here comes Shottujit and says, listen, this is a script. And anybody looking at the script will know that this is not just uh, any other actor's life. This is Uttam Kumar's life. And of course, what they talked about is the fact that Uttam Kumar, after a bout of uh, chicken pox, had to appear with those marks on his face, etc. Those are known. But what is perhaps not very really known, and neither Shottajit nor Uttam really talked about it, is the fact that Nayak is essentially a self surgery by Uttam or Uttam. So the you know Bengal's biggest director comes and says, Uttam, I want to tell you a story. And of course, Uttam, if he has this minimal sense, would know that this will not be a story um, which would be very nice, pretty love story. Right? And so this, so people often say Shut Nayok as Shottujitra is, I've written this as Shottujitra is now. Right? It's equally important. Right? And the fact that you let Shottujit actually do this surgery, that what is the idea of Nayak? Without that, you know, you show the Nayak in his 360 degree thing. I mean, in his failures, in his, in his, in his deep insecurities, in his moments of self-loathing, which almost leads to an act of suicide or kind of self-harm. And yet in the end, if you, nothing is harmed. I mean, after Nayak Uttam Kumar, nobody went and said, oh, Tom is like this, so I'm not going to watch another Uttam film. I mean, for 10 more years, Uttam Kumar is very much Uttam Kumar. So, this is remarkable, and Shratujit has said that in almost so many words, that it is a film that he made his own. And in the end, when he puts back his glasses, the idea of the hero is restored next morning. You see? So now it is in many ways very symbolic of this idea. And you know, many critics are actually very unhappy with Shottujit for not doing enough damage to man. But Shottujit's plan was not to do enough damage to the idea of man. His idea was to just explore and push the idea of the Nile beyond what we usually see. And I think it is truly, for me, and I've written it also, it's a, it's a place where two titans of Bengali cinema come together. And, and talks and look at the things they talk about. They talk about old cinema style, they talk about theater, they talk about politics, they talk about acting, they talk about direction, cinema being the director's medium, theater being the actor's medium. And they show, they talk about politics or what is the ambiguity of stars' presence in politics. They talk about the stars' gentility, problems, you know, uh, of, of stardom. But also at the same time, they show it with much grace and civility. Whatever happens to the star or in the Mukherjee, he never ever loses his sense of civility and decorum. So, what I, what for me now is a, so many people actually talk about wild strawberries eight and a half, but neither Marcello Mastroianni or, you know, 
for the actor's name in Wild Strawberries, Bergman, they were not playing themselves. Marcello, Mastroni was playing uh, Fellini. Mm, yes. But, but uh, to play himself with such grace and that too with a script by Shuktaji and I mean, that way it's a remarkable collaboration for the film. And we have the best film, perhaps, on cinema uh, that can ever be thought of. I mean, there are many parts of now which are also very prescient, very, very, you know, kind of come, uh, actually come uh, true in future in Uttam Kumar's own life. When, you know, then Jyoti says, film to bhalo, Cholchino, the film is not doing too well. And he says, Ami to <laughs> no, not enough. Bhaya. Look at the Kaka day. People don't have enough money, mm-hmm. and you, that actually becomes true in as Uttam stardom goes. This thing that he's not anymore enough. So many things like that, you know. So um, it's 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 remarkable actually. And I mean, I have already said, and you, we know it too well that in most of the film, Uttam is uh, it cannot be better. The performance cannot be better. There's not one point where you feel like, oh, this could have been. Slightly better. Yes. Yes. Shottujit also says, right, I have seen mistakes in my making, but in not in Uttam's acting. Have you seen Uttam? Every bit of the film is his. Every frame he makes his own. Yes. And in fact, I have said this in the book also. If you look at Chur- uh, Chiriakana, he actually, this tension between Uttam and Sh- Shottujit is gone. Chiriakana actually, Shottujit plays Uttam's charm of it. <laughs> so, you know, true, and he actually true, true. brings brings Bomkesh to the 60s. Bomkesh is a social conservative, my dear. Sharodindu's Bomkesh is extremely conservative. Actually, but here he is the unmarried one and he drinks and smokes and he is very comfortable with seducing an Anglo Indian. This is a very un Bomkesh Bomkesh. Mm-hmm. And that is Shrutuji because it plays with Uttam's uh, charismatic. So, we actually like. Uh are big fans of the song picturizations of uh, Uttam Kumar uh, being lip sync or presenting the song sequence. He was always outstanding. So like uh, we can we can mention a couple of favorite song sequences of Uttam Kumar. Like let us start with you, Shahunda. Which one do you think uh, uh, are your favorite uh, song sequences? Which is so difficult with so many of them. <laughs> Absolutely. We are putting in on the spot, I know. So let uh, let us let me give you three choices then. Okay, you go for three. Okay. <laughs> let me let me think, but I would definitely rate Boro Akalage as one. Yeah, uh, because very rarely is a man's loneliness filmed in that sense. People usually film a woman's loneliness, mm. you know, sol- solitude, etc. But a man's loneliness is not very common. Uh, right. in, in cinema and Uttam does it remarkably well. That is one. Uh, two, where I think Uttam's lip sync is out of this world is Tare Bole Dio. Ah. I mean, the way he brings in the whole, the, the playfulness with Vishwajit's his brother. and you know, if, you, if you just see that sequence, you will know that an elder brother and a younger brother is at, you know, you don't have to actually see the movie to understand. This is remarkable body language. I mean, so, so much of enjoyment while they are, you know, absolutely. like, and you know, this th- and, you know, <laughs> it's yes, yes. so remarkable for its natural, natural, this thing, uh, naturalness and naturalism, naturalism. Uh, and I think the third certainly would be, um, you know, I would, very highly think of uh, yes. Well, it's not Uttam Kumar's lip sync, but I think it's a wonderful. I and mean, there are many others, of course. I mean, you know, I mean some of the some of the Shonashi Raja, you know, where he is, you know, um, Shonashi Raja uh, is playing with the song. Manna, there's uh, both Shonashi Raja and three. First half are very similar, mm. and where he. You know, there is this, uh, since three, there's this Kirti Teke Shimo Dua, no. Hajar Taka Jhar Batita. And I think at some point, Shomitra's character says that, you know, why why waste, why throw it yes. so yes, far? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and there, his Shomashad, his, his yes men are all, digital. how can you say that to Babu? And Uttam Kumar just smiles. He said, hmm. And this is Mejas Taito Ashwara, Amira. 
I mean, you know that once, so twice, is. that's completely, I mean, he is the boss. I mean, nothing establishes that well. But you know, the song sequence, I must say, and most people do not actually, you know, if you see the second time rendering of Imiji Amar in Haranush, second time where Shuchitra is playing on the piano, you will see that Uttam is moving from the back, from the outside of the room to the parlor where she's playing. And, you know, Ojai calls, any Ojai calls cinematic movie is remarkable. People don't take it very seriously for some reason. He already shows half light and half darkness, a door slightly open. That the, he's playing with this man's memory is very clear in the mise en scene that is mm. there behind. And if you see that many times the camera almost for 30 seconds focuses just on Uttam Kumar's face, where he's trying to very desperately recollect where he has heard the song. It is fantastic. Very few actors would have been able to not move, but yet make the camera you know, animated, the scene animated with just kind of, just making some small adjustments to his face muscles that he's trying to recall where this song is coming from. I mean, fabulous. These will be my three, and there could be many. Right. right. So, uh, or quickly, your one, and then I'll wrap it up. If you take a couple of your favorites. Okay. I think one, one song I really love, which is a very, which is not that popular, Shayanda, is in Chawa Pawa, there is yeah. this Uttam's uh, Jodi Bhabo Eto Khala Noy, which comes Correct. just after Shuchitra's, you know, Khala Noy song, Correct. where he kind of, it, it's kind of a poetry, it kind of moves the film. And Correct. Correct. he's Correct. looking at one direction while he's addressing Shuchitra. <laughs> and there's, a, there's a beautiful romance and a Very kind good of choice. sigh Very good in choice. that one. That, that, I love that. I, I actually love Chao Bawa a lot. I, I yes, really go back yes. to that. I thing. agree. I agree. And one song that I wanted to mention, Shubhadi, where Uttam is not lip syncing, uh, is in Morutitto Hinglaj's Kothen um, Klanti uh, Hule, uh, where Anil Chatterjee is doing the song and everyone is in the chorus. Uttam is just walking. But, the, but that expressions that you know, yeah. he's walking, but he's not into it. He's not into what everyone else is feeling, but he's still obsessed to continue. Correct. Correct. He's Absolutely. so good. He's so good in that. Awesome. Anyone you have to tell Shubhadi? <laughs> well, I think uh, I wanted to tell Hajar Taka Jharvati, said it. Absolutely. So I think, uh, I think from Shoptapudi, Ebar Kali Tumai Khabo is something which I really... <laughs> I agree, I agree. I mean, that's a, <laughs> such a fantastic uh, kind of scene. Oh, yeah. Sunla, suddenly he comes up with the uh, dhol and he st starts playing and oh, he takes it to the challenge. And uh, you know, that whole like, scene where he says, Ege Kriton, Kisui Hosila. <laughs> Fantastic. Even that scene where he says, I'm going to touch it. I say, no, touch it. You know, that the whole comic thing and the, also the chemistry with Torun Kumar, which is so good. I mean, I mean, you know, if you look at Deyanaya, that's another song. If you allow me the fourth song, I would have yeah, said, yeah, uh, you know, Dole yeah, Dodul, Dole Dodul, Dole Jodul. Dole Dodul. I mean, I wrote it on Facebook for many, some four, three years ago, that this song, suddenly captures a very beautiful part of old Kolkata. The Sunday afternoon, two friends, there is a window outside looking at a neighborhood, like, you know, a typical, those days, a South Kolkata kind of neighborhood. I mean, it's such a beautiful scene. And they're talking, and there's a slight flirtation between Uttam and Lila, uh, 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 Lili Chakraborty. Lili Chakraborty, and then Torun Kumar is kind of so, I mean, this song itself encompasses, I mean, in the film, of course, Diana is a fabulous romantic comedy, by any means. But also, uh, this song actually captures a lot of something that we have heard from other people, you know. Our Sundays would be like this, Sundays would be like that. But somehow, it brings the time machine, like, brings it to our time. I mean, it's a fabulously well shot. Chonko uh, Balai, when he says, I mean, it will be a very good song, a fantastic song. But you know, there's another song, where Madhubi, Madhubi. And Uttam just stands out and looks at her. And you know, that's also again, Uttam not singing, but very nice. Very, very, very nice. I, I remember you wrote in the book about this sequence of Jinder Bondi, where there is a classical oh, yes. rendition. Where you know he is drunk at the moment. At the same time, he is also giving those classical touches in his delivery. 
Amazing. Everyone talks about Shomitra and absolutely marvelous as Mayur Bahon, but he was yes. so good. And that, yes, yes. that Mayur Bahon is more enigmatic is because that's the character, right? Yes, yes. And also he's, he's sharp and he's like that. But if you look at Shankar Singh's this dual character, Tom plays with absolute marvelous. And this scene especially, but Tapan Sina specifically mentions that, that you have to be scrupulous and tuneful, but also you are drunk. And how can somebody do it in one go? And it's Ali Akbar Khan's medley. It's not like anybody's medley. And you take home the music and come back. I mean, look at uh, the, the fifth is that. I mean, and I mean, Manade is famous story that he is, uh, Manade is in Bombay, I think. Uttam Kumar is, he meets in the, this thing, suburbs, and he says, uh, he's listening to the songs. And he sees Manade and says, Ki chen, what have you done? I'm constantly listening so that I can pick up the nuances of the... I mean, the tenacity, the training, but yeah, I mean, so this is, I mean, one can talk endlessly, really. I mean, how could a man lip sync? And those days were technology. You know, remember that they couldn't see themselves. It's not like now you could simply see on a digital monitor and see and check and come back. Whatever you do has done, dusted. Then five, six months later, it's in the edit room being edited. So whatever is happened has happened. And then you can't go back to it. So it's right. so remarkable given the technological, the elemental technology that was there. Also yeah. more now that what has happened to Bangla cinema with lots of technology. And it's the only sad state of the of cinema. You only right. marvel at when technology was not there, how do they? So that's that's another discussion for two hours, maybe Shayan. <laughs> maybe we can have that also. Uh, but today, I think uh, before before we let you go, uh, we have I have one last question. It's more like a, like a, a fantasy kind of a question, really. So uh, we are a generation now who have watched Uttam Kumar featuring regularly on television and thereby got to know the actor and his charisma. Uh, we also knew about the appeal and stardom of this man from our parents as they had witnessed it first time. And the legend thus has thrived on, um, as you've explained in such detail. Now, however, we are in the times of OTT, um, OTT contents on demand. Do you think uh, Uttam Kumar and his cinema can still live on for another few generations to come? See, the one simple and short answer would be yes, because uh, in terms of how Uttam Kumar and on the other hand, it is something that is unknown because television specifically created a certain amount of appeal among the middle class to Dash by playing Bangla cinema in their, during their weekend slots. It was part of television's entry into the middle class drawing room in the 80s. And Uttam Kumar cinema, Bangla cinema in general, became its chief, let's say, uh, chief apparatus for mass mobilization because, you know, it could guarantee absolutely easy viewership because those who were there during the peak of this time, 60s and 70s, were very much alive in the 80s, older but alive. So they, of course, wanted to go back to films they saw in their youth and childhood and now they could see sitting in their own homes. So there was this whole appeal and a cycle and a televised thing. Whereas now, I do not frankly, so by that, that logic, how the OTTs want to play, bring Uttam Kumar into its fold, will to an extent uh, depend. With Doordarshan, there was one thing was that, yes, sh small t small screen Uttam Kumar continued. But it's not actually that simple. So in one, if you ask me, will it, I would say that generally I would feel yes, why not? Since we're talking now, we will probably be talking 40, I said, at least 10 years later, again, probably. But with a new generation who has come to see Uttam but on the other hand, the kind of specific cultural domain that Doordarshan created in the 80s, will it be there in the two OTTs? Frankly, I don't know. But I don't think it would be that. I mean, if Uttam survives now, or Bangla cinema in general, for a very new generation, who are completely new, who are completely away from bioscope, from the idea of big screen entertainment, uh, I don't know. We probably depend on a couple of factors which are not absolutely sure at the moment what they are. I mean, how we relate to culture, how we relate to our past, 
how far we are willing to look back at cinema because see this more than relevance if one is looking for relevance one is will not find but if one is looking for how a certain cinematic culture behaved and belonged in the past perhaps so there i think another set of challenges will come for bangla cinema of the past whether it will survive into a generation see me at my age i am still in between i'm the mid between i've seen that the end of single plex i've seen the coming of it you guys have seen less of single plex and more of television and all this a new generation will but you not even see good darshan of television so difficult to say but if we do then good i mean 10 years later another generation comes up talking about uttam kumar then why not or bangla cinema in general and even without uttam kumar there is so much of great cinema and i think Absolutely. we will also have to work on the subtitles of these films right i mean we have limited it to only bengalis only shottujit rai films will be restored nothing beyond i mean that's such you a know, shame that's a huge 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 thing and you know this government last government this government yeah i will do this and you know a cinema a history of, a, a, a city which has a 125 year old cinema culture does not have a cinema museum it has let all its single plexes go away it has not built a archive of cinema it has not made restored any film. how can a film like you know necklace kanna this is only uttam kumar a chiro kumar shabha uh, shankar narayan bank how can they be allowed to just vanish and they are 50s films they're not even 30s films and we have let 30s and 40s rot but 50s also and thankfully now angel and others are this ott or some sense and actually we re- you know revive this whole thing of monetizing these films for future technologies whereas they were simply lying in the cold storage and was doing nothing in the vhs years nobody could see them so i think in some ways on the other hand otts will probably because now if you look at the otts across the board various many of them have films which were which were also lost now they are again available not many many 20 25 of them across the board so there is a very very genuine need for restoration and a public culture of looking at cinema in the long jury as a whole and not just what is happening now and releasing now in the theaters but cinema because calcutta is the rare city in the world only example is bombay and paris and london, not in london and california maybe to another perhaps only paris which has been part of cinema history from the very beginning from the very beginning 1895 uh, you know so it is really a pity that we do not value this wonderful history and purno is still standing purno is a remarkable place in the history of especially bengali you know first bengali theater apart from away from the modern theaters etc written that but we are standing in the under the elements in any day to be pulled down in some ugly skyscraper will come who know is history is bengali cinema history so on an unrelated yeah. note uh, shayanda you talked about the bengali theater we recently saw me and arup had the opportunity to watch uh, uh, once upon a time in calcutta Uh, of uh, Aditya Vikram uh, Shen uh, Shen Gupta, and there we saw this. This story is based on. I will not divulge much, but then like it, it talks about same this uh, this essence of a city which is actually getting lost. And one of the I would say one of the primary characters is an abandoned cinema hall, right? Oh. It's a screen uh, where people used to come and sit, and he has so beautifully uh, captured that. So as you said that, I could visualize that what you were actually uh, Absolutely. talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. and with that it's a single screen so if you i've written a little bit about this book there are better works there also other people have written that they also you know bhavanipur and its cinema also is a culture hathi bagan and its cinema halls are a culture i mean multiplex is all same all same they all look the same. yes absolutely but if you look at pre nokshal cinema going culture in hathi bagan it has a specificity of Similarly, if you look at that in right, Bhavanipur, there's a specificity. My father can still remember which film he saw in what hall because each hall was different. Ita Jyoti the dekhi chila. I saw it in Jyoti. I saw this in Metro. I saw this in 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 uh, you know Lighthouse Priya. You know one of them. 
visually, etc. Hathi Bagan people still talk very, very, you know, with a lot of warmth about their, their, you know, way long back when there would be seven halls in a span of a, you know, mile or less. Now you can't even remember what the film you saw yesterday. Where did I see it? South City, whatever, one of the multiplexes. You see, so this whole thing about uniformity, which is a part of neoliberal problem, I mean, with cinema, that's a huge loss. I mean, I, maybe there's no way. That's you know, the whole market, the whole economy is going that way. But at least in terms of archive, what they have done in Europe, that they have actually restored some of them, they play old films. I mean, what is stopping somebody from taking over Purno and actually playing old Kumar films in large screen? Any civilized city would have done it. I mean, you just need a little bit of money, not even imagination. So, you're so right, actually. Like uh, once you said that, it, it it comes to my mind that actually the uniqueness of the cinema going experience, like which we've also experienced not much back. Like if you talk think about DDLJ, right? Yeah. When we used to run with single streams, and even that time we remember. But as you said, recently whatever we watch, it is also uniform, also similar uh, in the way you experience cinema. Uh, it's it, it takes away from the audience. Actually, I think mean, that's a very lots, good point. Lots, lots, and this also this whole idea. See. Why, why another superstardom is not possible? One of the things we keep saying that Salman Khan is the last superstar because he still attracts crowds to the single screen. And this is important. A superstar is also made in a collective viewing. If it, it's an individualized, atomized viewing in your own houses, you don't don't create superstars there. Superstars always have a have a location in the whole idea of collective viewing that you enter into a contract to cut a ticket to get into a dark room. You sit down, you almost fasten your seat belts kind of, and then you prepare yourself, make yourself ready for a film. Whereas at home, you stop, start, okay, bro, I will watch later. And I've like, I have 50 films on OTT, which I've thought I will watch later. I just watched a little bit. You see, True. so that changes the whole I relationship of the spectator with the, with the cinema. And this kind of atomized spectatorship, Cannot create superstar. Cannot create a collective idea of a superstar. So that so is well also said. there. So well said, Shanda. Uh, this uh, entire session with you was such a learning experience for us, as I've well, already it was mentioned. My pleasure. My pleasure. And uh, we got to know about Uttam Kumar, and not only what we have already known in the past, but the angles and the viewpoints uh, which you brought through in this discussion were really illuminating and uh, really thought provoking. And I urge all of our viewers to actually read uh, Shayanda's book. It's a wonderful book, possibly, I think one of the best uh, books on Uttam Kumar. And of course, it's in the English language. It is accessible to you, to everyone. Uh, so I, I request all of you to read, to understand Bengali cinema and Indian cinema. Shayanda, thank you so much for your time. You're being so generous to us. My pleasure. And, my pleasure. Uh, <laughs> and thank you, Oro. Thank you. I mean, it's my thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for the taking the discussion to places where some new things could come up. Thank you very much.